You're in your car driving back home when you see some dogs up for adoption. You figure, why not rescue a cute pooch and give it a warm home? You pull over and see a massive goliath of a dog. It's got pointy ears and huge paws. Its eyes are deep and sharp. You're staring at a wolf-dog hybrid. This can happen in the wild, and it's pretty common to see in many households. It's actually the most common wild and domesticated animal cross out there, with an estimated 400,000 of these as pets in the United States alone. There are many combinations of these animals, but the most common are gray wolves mixed with German shepherds or Siberian huskies. These crosses may seem majestic, but they're really dangerous to have around the house. Many cases were reported of wolf dogs attacking their owners for random and unpredictable reasons. It's best to leave these doggos alone. And speaking of wild doggos, some of the most dangerous ones out there also look quite adorable. You better keep some distance if you ever come across one of these, because they will chase after you. They're even called the kings of Australia, the one and only dingo. These animals have been around for hundreds of years across Southeast Asia to Australia. Their golden brown color blends with their surroundings, making them even more dangerous when lurking around for prey. And just like a wolf-dog hybrid, many dingoes are also bred with domesticated dogs to create a dingo-doggo combo. Yeah, I said that. Now, that may sound cute, but they're anything but. They're still wild animals that hunt in packs and are ruthless even to humans. Now, this one may seem like a no-brainer, but there are enthusiasts out there who keep venomous snakes in their houses. Not everyone can handle those serpents since they need proper care and attention. Some states even banned owning them. Sure, it may be pretty cool to show off one of these to a group of friends at a party. But stats show that there are at least 10,000 snake bites a year in the United States. Some of these are pets. Snake handling professionals equip themselves with proper gear and tools when extracting them from unwanted areas. So having one in the house on purpose is risky enough. And there are many venomous snakes in the wild that are actually in danger and shouldn't be kept at home unless for nurturing. When first introducing this animal, explorers described it as a mix of a duck, a beaver, and an otter the size of a house cat that laid eggs. Come again? Scientists brushed the platypus off as fiction until they saw it with their own eyes. Cute as it may be, this weird mammal is actually venomous. On its webbed back feet, its heels hold spurs for self-defense and to escape and wiggle their way out of danger. As you can imagine, keeping a venomous duck-billed beaver isn't something you should do, even though they look so adorable as babies. Platypuses are extremely hard to take care of and need massive amounts of real estate to swim and roam around. They're really picky with their diet and can be quite aggressive when handling them. But they might make a good secret agent. Owning a cat isn't usually a big deal, unless you're dealing with a serval. These wild cats are bigger than the typical house cat and look like little leopards. Yeah, they look majestic and like to jump from place to place, but they're still not highly recommended to keep at home. They've been known to cause a ruckus in the house and rip up curtains and couches with their claws. They rarely listen to humans and are aggressive when played with. They're very clever and need loads of places to climb and explore, and do all kinds of serval things. A slow loris is just an animal you want to hug all day. Its large, bulging eyes make you want to cry for joy. The way it grabs onto branches with its tiny hands brings smiles to everyone. And it does it all so slowly. But there's a dark secret to handling these primates. They're endangered and illegal. And even though they look oh so cute to handle, they're actually in extreme distress. They're night animals and can't handle too much interaction. And it's enough knowing they're actually venomous. They're the only primates in the world to have a toxic bite that can pack a hurtful punch. 
At least it won't be hard outrunning these creatures. Koalas are also animals that enjoy climbing tree branches and eating. But having one of these at home is totally unadvisable. These animals are very protective of their young and aggressive if they feel threatened. And despite being called koala bears, they're not related to bears at all. They're marsupials, or in English, related to kangaroos and wombats. And like kangaroos, they have pouches for the babies to grow up in. They have opposable thumbs like primates and humans to grab onto branches and climb. Trying to domesticate these animals won't work, and feeding them is the main reason they can't live with humans. They need special eucalyptus leaves that grow in forests in order to survive, which means they need large forest ranges to thrive. What do you get when you have a possum-looking animal the size of your palm with wings? Nope, not a bat, but a sugar glider. And they don't actually have wings, so they don't technically fly. Bats still hold the record for the only winged mammal out there. Rather, these marsupials have a thick layer of skin that stretches from their hands to their back angles that acts like a glider. Their thick furry tails are used to steer themselves while gliding down. And while they might seem cute and superhero-like, they don't belong indoors with people. They're animals that are naturally born to live in big families with their own kind. When people get these animals as pets, they usually have one or two at home, and they need trees to scale up and glide down. Not to mention sugar gliders are nocturnal and sleep all day to be active at night, which goes against humans, unless you're a night owl. And speaking of owls and other nocturnal creatures, owls are animals that shouldn't be kept in cages or in barns. We've all fantasized about an owl carrying a letter to our windows when we were younger. But that doesn't mean owls are these magical creatures that can be kept as pets. For starters, owls are solitary creatures and don't understand a flock mentality like many other birds, which is why they're not accustomed to having company and being cuddled with daily. And if you decided to keep an owl indoors, then consider your furniture gone. Owls need space to fly around and do owlish things. So your curtains, pillows, and bookshelves won't be spared. And being nocturnal animals, owls tend to throw the biggest parties at night when everyone's sleeping. Now, hedgehogs may seem like the perfect pet to have around the house, but they come with some restraints. Although adorable little animals, the prickly spikes on their backs may not be for the faint-hearted. Many injuries can be a result of mishandling and the fact that they roll up into a cute ball for self-defense. They're solitary creatures as well, and can't be around other hedgehogs or anything they might find threatening. And like most solitude lovers, hedgehogs are nocturnal and like to go for late-night cruises alone. So if you do happen to get one of these spike balls, make sure to have a lot of room for it to explore daily. With a ring tail, reddish-brown color, these fluff balls make the best cuddle companions out there. I mean, who can resist the cuteness of the red panda? And no, it's not related to the giant panda, but it's still as cute. And I don't mean to burst your bubble, but it's best to leave these creatures alone. They're found in Southeast Asia in dense rainforests and can't be in captivity. And just like cats, they have sharp claws that'll redecorate your home interior, and not in a good way. When threatened, they release a foul odor to escape from danger. Hey, I can relate. Although its big fluffy ears make it even more irresistible, it's best to let these guys do their own thing. Wow, this guy has gained international fame for its uh, not-so-attractive looks. But it was an unfair competition. I'm talking about the one and only blobfish. This thing was once on display in an aquarium, looking like a gloopy, slimy, well, blob. But underwater in its natural habitat, it looks like any other normal fish. It's a deep-sea dweller living off the coast of Australia. The blobfish thrives at around 3,000 feet below the surface. 
At those depths, the pressure is 120 times higher than what you and I are used to. In fact, only robust submarines can go that deep. This droopy creature doesn't have a skeleton or much muscle. Instead, it has jelly-like flesh to combat the extreme underwater pressure. You also won't find a great white shark in any aquarium you go to. In the past, many have tried adding great whites along other sharks in their tanks, but it never worked out. They'd stop eating and even struggle to swim. Doesn't make for great business either. It's too costly to keep the great white because a large enough tank will need millions of gallons of water. These fish don't like staying in one area for long. They prefer open waters where they can swim vast distances. We haven't seen one in captivity since the 1970s. The Saola, better known as the Asian unicorn, was just discovered in 1992. It lives on the slopes of the Annamite Mountains between Laos and Vietnam. It looks like an antelope, but genetic tests show it's more closely related to cows. The Saola is one of the rarest large mammals in the world. Surveys estimate there are just 70 to 750 left in the wild. Yeah, that's a pretty big range. Experts can't get a more specific number because they're impossible to spot. Only two have been caught and studied. On to the unicorns of the sea, narwhals. There are more than 80,000 of these creatures, but they're still near threatened. They've got long, narrow tusks protruding from their heads. This unicorn-like tusk is actually a tooth that can grow up to 10 feet. They belong to the whale family, but unlike their relatives, they don't migrate. Narwhals spend their lives in the Arctic waters of Greenland, Canada, Norway, and Russia. They live up to 50 years in the wild, but they can't make it in captivity. So if you want to see one in real life, the zoo isn't the place to look. Unlike other creatures on the list, swallows are very common. You might recognize this pretty bird from those gorgeous blue feathers running from their head to tail. Even though they're one of the most widespread species, they're not suited for zoos. They eat on the fly, literally, and catch their food in the air, which is why they only feed on flying insects. They need to live in large aviary structures with plenty of flying room, and most zoos can't provide that. You'll find plenty of lowland gorillas in captivity. The same can't be said about mountain gorillas. These apes have longer hair, and they're more grayish than brown. There are only about 1,000 of them in the wild, making them an endangered species. Mountain gorillas usually spend a quarter of their day eating. Back in the 60s and 70s, there were many attempts to catch them and start a captive population. But it was impossible. They might not do well in enclosed environments because of their particular dietary needs. Without those, the gorilla's health declined noticeably. Another issue could have been stress. Now, there aren't any mountain gorillas in any facility. Diving back into the water, we have the giant squid, a behemoth that inspired lore of the kraken. This creature remains a mystery to scientists. Their inhospitable deep-sea environment has made them hard to study. The only research scientists could do was from rare specimens that washed up on the shore. In 2004, researchers in Japan snapped the first pic of a live giant squid. Two years later, they managed to bring one up to the surface. Because they live so deep in the sea, their eyes are the size of a beach ball. They can see things in the darkest places of the ocean where other creatures would struggle to see anything at all. To this day, the giant squid has never been caught or kept in captivity to be studied in full. Next, we've got the rarest large mammal on the planet, the Javan rhino. Less than 70 are left, and they all live in a national park on the island of Java, Indonesia. Of the five total rhino species, they're the most endangered one. Scientists aren't sure how long they live, but guess somewhere between 30 to 40 years. The area where they live is vulnerable to tsunamis, and they're also close to many active volcanoes. If any of them erupts, the Javan rhino could go extinct. Now, a creature you've probably never heard of is the Indri. The Madagascar native is a unique primate that relies on trees to move around and feed. They live 15 to 18 years in the wild, but in captivity, some barely made it one year. Probably because they don't do so well with stress and disturbance. Experts believe their diet is so specific that it can't be replicated in captivity. 
They also notice the animals don't reproduce when they're taken out of the wild. The pink fairy armadillo doesn't have wings or do magic, but it's still an adorable little animal with a pinkish shell that acts like a living radiator. It's the smallest of all armadillos, and it spends its entire life using its bulky front claws to burrow through the earth, mostly at night. It can hardly be spotted, let alone caught, and that's why scientists haven't been able to study this fellow very much. And you'll only find it in central Argentina. Even though rare bugs are popular in zoos, one you'll never see is the giraffe weevil. Why the name? It has an extraordinarily long neck that helps the bug build its nest. No ladder needed. They spend most of their time feeding on the leaves of a single tree species dubbed in their honor the giraffe beetle tree. There's another insect species called the giraffe weevil in New Zealand, but funny enough, it's an entirely different species. Straight from the deepest part of the earth comes the Mariana snailfish. It thrives at 26,000 feet below. It's almost as high as planes fly, only the opposite direction, of course. The pressure at such depths is so intense, it feels like an elephant is standing on your toe. Ow! Thus, it just couldn't make it in the shallower waters of an aquarium. Another deep-sea lover is the Dumbo octopus. It lives 13,000 feet below the surface. At those depths, it rarely feels threatened. So this little cutie doesn't have an ink sac like other octopuses, which use theirs for protection to get away from enemies. It belongs to the family of umbrella octopuses. You can see its arms are connected by a web of skin, giving it an umbrella-like appearance when swimming around. Not many people have seen a Dumbo octopus, but it isn't an endangered species. Nobody can go that deep to mess with this guy. Lastly, one of the most critical factors for deciding if an animal can survive in an aquarium is their size. When it comes to blue whales, unless an aquarium is the size of the ocean, that's a no-go. And an animal that big needs tons of food. No aquarium could ever afford it. It's an endangered species with less than 25,000 left. These marine mammals migrate over thousands of miles. To cover such vast distances, a blue whale can actually sleep while it's swimming. But it's never entirely unconscious. It lightly naps while cruising through the water. That's a big boy. Squirrels' teeth never stop growing, but the animals wear them down by gnawing on nuts and other hard foods. The front of the rodent's teeth is actually orange. It's because they're covered in special tough enamel. Bet you're glad you don't have that to deal with. Some bird species don't mind munching on chili peppers. That's because they can't feel the heat. Peppers burn your mouth because they contain a special chemical, capsaicin. But birds don't have the taste buds needed to feel its effects. The rhino's horn is made of hair, or at least the same protein that makes up your hair and nails. This protein is called keratin. Such a horn is kind of unique since other animals have horns with a bony center. The woodpecker can peck the wood 20 times per second. This pace is almost too high for the human eye to notice. How much wood would a woodpecker peck if a woodpecker could peck wood? The number of pecks often reaches a total of 8,000 to 12,000 a day. A starfish does have eyes, one on the end of each of its arms. These eyes are light-sensitive groups of cells. Frogs don't need to drink water. Instead, they have an area known as the drinking patch. It's on their bellies and thighs. They use it to absorb water directly through the skin. Well, that could save some time. Most caterpillar species have around 4,000 muscles in their body, and almost 250 of them are in the head alone. Christmas tree worms are much more beautiful than you can imagine. But even though the pines look awesome, two-thirds of the worm's body is hidden in a calcium carbonite tube. And the point of this is… I don't have one. Narwhals' famous tusks are actually their teeth that are kind of turned inside out. These unicorns of the sea have just two teeth. And in males, one of them grows right through their upper lip. Unlike your teeth, this one is tough inside and sensitive and soft on the outside. The anteater doesn't have teeth, but it's not a problem. This creature has a super long tongue. 
This tongue helps the animal lap up more than 35,000 termites and ants every day. Now well, that's one way to lick hunger. The flea can jump more than 200 times their body length. If humans had such an ability, they would jump as high as the Empire State Building. Woohoo! The red-eyed tree frog's eggs can hatch earlier if they sense their environment isn't safe. Small animals with fast metabolism see in slow-mo. This helps them escape larger creatures. Koala's fingerprints are very, very similar to the human ones. Sometimes these animals' fingerprints even get confused at crime scenes, probably in Australia. The hippo's sweat is pink and not exactly sweat. It's a reddish, oily fluid. Its function is to not cool the body, but to moisturize the skin and protect it. This fluid also functions as an antibiotic. So, you get sunburn or cut, you can smear a hippo all over you. Polar bear skin is black, and the hairs of their coat are hollow and almost see-through. These animals have fur growing even on the bottom of their paws. This gives them a better grip on ice and protects against cold. Some species of tarantulas, some of the largest spiders in the world, can live without food for more than two years. I still think they're creepy. Platypuses close their eyes while kissing, uh, I mean swimming. They have special folds of skin covering their ears and eyes. They prevent water from getting inside. These animals' nostrils also have a watertight seal. Emus can't walk backwards, but scientists aren't sure why. These flightless birds are the only ones that have calf muscles. Emus can sprint really fast. They can also travel long distances, but they can't back up. Crocodiles can't move their tongue because it's attached to the mouth roof. It keeps the throat closed and protects the animal's airway. Water snakes, dolphins, whales, alligators, crocodiles, and turtles can drown. It'll happen if they stay underwater for too long. These animals can't breathe in the water. They can just hold their breath for a very long time. Only one species of birds can fly backwards. That's hummingbirds. Hey, go talk to the emu. These tiny birds can also beat their wings up to 80 times per second. Despite what elephant shrews look like, these small animals are more closely related to elephants than shrews. Maybe that's why they have their trademark trunk-like noses. Elephant shrews use them to munch on insects. True enough. Cats, as well as other felines, can't taste sweet things. They don't have the taste buds needed for that. Too bad, more for me. Flamingos can only eat with their heads upside down. That's why their lower bill is massive and their upper bill isn't fixed. Such an arrangement is perfect for upside-down feeding. But it's the opposite of what other birds have. It's not easy being pink. Tiger skin is as striped as their fur. That's all I have to say about that. When toucans sleep, they curl into pretty tight balls. These birds can turn their head so that their tail covers their head and the beak rests on the back. So yeah, they have a ball. The ostrich has some of the largest eyes in the animal kingdom. They're more massive than a bird's brain. Each eye is as big as a billiard ball. All clownfish get born male, but in some circumstances, they can turn into females. This change is irreversible. Unlike most fish, when seahorses mate, they do it for life. Even cuter, when the mates travel, they move side by side and often hold on to each other's tails. The male usually gets stuck schlepping the luggage. Termites never sleep. They don't need to recharge their batteries. But they can eat 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, on your house. The sloth needs up to 2 weeks to digest its food. Hey, take your time, no hurry, nothing on the schedule. Dogs' nose prints can be used for their identification. They are similar to human fingerprints and unique for each animal. Owls don't have eyeballs. Instead, they have eye tubes that don't move in the eye sockets. Penguins don't have external ears, but their hearing is especially sharp. Especially when they're on the lookout for polar bears. Shh, let's not tell them. Jellyfish are up to 98% water. That's why when they get washed ashore, their bodies can evaporate into the air after just a few hours. 
If a traffic jam happens underwater, an alligator will always give way to a manatee. Nice manners. Grizzly bears have such a strong bite that they can crush a bowling ball. So it's smart just to let them win. Giant pandas aren't picky about their sleeping spots. They usually fall asleep wherever they are, in most cases, right on the forest floor. The giant panda's newborn cubs are tiny. They weigh like a small cup of coffee and are smaller than a mouse. The red handfish can walk along the ocean floor with the help of its hands. But of course, they are not hands, but evolved fins, really. Cats don't usually meow at each other. A study has shown the felines use this way of communication mostly to get attention from us humans. And it works. Sloths can't shiver. It's not that they're too busy digesting that two-week-old meal. Their fur is sometimes covered with algae. And when they get too hot or too cold, their metabolism shuts down. During the hard times, immortal jellyfish transform themselves back into their younger state. Once they reach the stage when they're nothing but a blob of tissue, like me, these creatures start to grow again. And this process can apparently repeat again and again. The closest living relatives of the T-Rex are chickens and ostriches. Don't turn your back. The moray eel has another set of jaws that can extend from his throat. First, the main jaws close around an unlucky sea creature. Then the additional set grabs the eel's future meal with backward-pointing razor-sharp teeth. And after that, the captured animal gets dragged back into the eel's throat. I just lost my appetite. Some species of snails have hairy shells. Thanks to these hairs, snails can better stick to wet surfaces. When humpback whales hunt, they often gather in a group and apply a bubble net tactic to catch their food. The bubbles don't let the schools of fish get away. Snow leopards can't roar like other large felines. It has to do with their less developed vocal cords. But these animals can meow, growl, hiss, and even purr. Not to drift away from their group while napping, sea otters hold hands. They can also entangle themselves in giant seaweed for the same purpose. Hey, it kelps. Lions are often called the king of the prairie. I thought it was the king of the jungle. And still, up to 90% of all the hunting in the pride is done by the females. The males are in charge of protecting the territory and the pride members. And they make the delicious potato salad known as Hakuna Matator. Cats are famous for their uncanny ability to move their ears. All because kitties have 32 muscles in each outer ear. Some shark species can glow in the dark. Unfortunately, only other sharks can see this greenish glimmer. You have up to 8,000 taste buds, but your pooch has just a bit over 1,500. The blue jay can imitate other birds. Its favorite is a hawk's call. The blue jay uses it to scare away other birds from its territory. The hartebeest has an amazing evasion tactic. To run away from other animals, they move in a zigzag pattern. Bottlenose dolphins have names for one another. Those are specific whistles. Hey, Bob. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Dolly. Hey, boys. And thanks for all the fish. Giraffes have long, and I mean it, black tongues. Scientists suppose this color might protect the tongue from getting sunburned. Well, that's all I got. See ya.